Hey Nick, want to help me film the unboxing of my new Save by the Bell box set? Uh, yeah. This is such a great idea. Shh. I want this moment to be perfect. Oh, I like butter. What do you mean there's other unboxing videos? Unboxing brings up 107,000 results on YouTube. I. I, I Give me that! Oh. oh my god. This video is so much better than ours. It's like a dance. Look at the subtle use of red in the text. Gee, Kyle. I wonder why this is so much of a phenomenon. I, I guess they're just attempting to preserve that new car smell. The exciting possibility that this product will fulfill their psychological lack, as Lacan would put it. Let's just delete this. This guy's way too good at fulfilling psychological lack. I mean, he really captures the moment, transmuting a temporal event into a hermetically preserved artifact, a souvenir that can be revisited time and time again. Yes, but the video record of the unboxing isn't a true archiving of time. The spatial temporal context of the moment is displaced, leaving behind only illusory images. The desire to truly re-inhabit the moment is unsatisfied, and the quest to yield aging and death has utterly failed. Time is once again indomitable. That reminds me of early cinema. When movies were pioneered during the 19th century, people were optimistic that humanity had finally achieved the impossible, that we had finally cheated death. Noted film theorist André Bazin held that film embalms time, rescuing it from its proper corruption. Tom Gunning noted that this perception quickly changed. This is immortality. Death will no longer be total. What first seemed to promise immortality ultimately delivers ghosts. The fact that life is short makes time our most valuable commodity. Richard Florida writes the leisure has been colonized by time thrift mentality. The people multitask, speed up activities, and substitute short leisure events for longer ones, generally attempting to cram each moment full of activity all in the hopes of wringing the maximum utility out of each dwindling second. This phenomenon of recording unboxings is the logical conclusion of time thrift mentality. Here, we seek to maximize the enjoyment time of our dollar by recording the moment of initial consumption. We have effectively turned one product into two, the material object as well as the viewable token commemorating the purchase. Even our leisure time has been infiltrated by these profit-making mentalities. I mean, to think, some depraved antisocials collect things simply to own them, gambling away their immediate enjoyment of the item on some imaginary future where the object is taken on value. Don't play with us. I can't. I can't do it. I can't uh, understand why people of our generation have this pathology to collect things. Collect things. Collect things. Collect things. Oh, Nick, how is your childhood going? The main thing with Pokemon... These things will be worth something in a few years. Just hurry up to, you know, get everything as quickly as possible. The beginner's deck, you know, the pack, beginner's pack. Then just buy the theme decks and regular card packs of loving cards. They come in, you know, various, uh, various forms, both cute and cuddly, so even little girls will like them. They keep trying to catch them all, but they just keep making new ones for me to buy. Ah. And we are sold the idea that we can only be happy once we've got them all. Yet this pursuit is impossible. When we buy one product, we want to get an ensemble, no? For example, I bought Windows Vista. And then I had to upgrade my motherboard, my father board, my video card, everything. Wait, wh what's my problem? Um, well, um, you want to have sex with your mother? <laughs> You know what I think? Delete it. Let's never make another record of our existences again.
Okay, I mean, that's how you feel about it. I mean, I know what could cheer us up. Uh, some Halo? You're on. And rather than risk potentially playing a disappointing match, why don't we just rewatch that match that was really great from a few months ago in multiple angles and in slow motion? If it's anything like the first seven rewatchings, then I say yes. But uh, could you maybe narrate our rewatching with more insight about why people collect things in general? Oh, well, sure. Susan Stewart writes that the appeal of the collection comes from the romance of contraband, for its scandal is the removal from the natural location. This removal imbues the object with a personal meaning to the owner. Temporarily, the souvenir moves history into private time. It's just like that time I went to the Bettina Clemen concert. I just had to buy the CD. Even though it was available at Walmart for $11.95, I needed a material object by which I could revisit that moment and thereby take control of time. So a collection is really just an attempt to create glacial time. That's right, Nick. It's a fantasy for permanence and continuity. A kind of museum where cultural artifacts can be extracted and preserved from the ravages of time. Like Facebook. Here, the very act of socializing is archived. It takes place at your own pace. Photographs of events act as digital souvenirs, and conversations are stored to be revisited time and time again. Famed Marxist Karl Marx said that in capitalist societies, wealth is demonstrated as an immense collection of commodities. Digital archiving, like mechanical reproduction before it, has allowed people to boast the wealth of their personal collections to others. For example, did you know that I have 1,032 more friends than Kyle Natal? Well, that's because you lied in your profile about Justin Timberlake being your dad. Well, it's a profile, Kyle. People expect stuff like that. The Oxford Dictionary of Internet Psychology says people overwhelmingly exaggerate, beautify, and ennoble self-presentations in order to impress others and consequently enhance their chances to gain attention. <laughs> well, that was such a good rally. Um, why are there so many clan members in that photo with you? Um, that's not me. Oh, okay. But you bring up a good point. Facebook offers a history that you can revise. It's a site of complete fantasy. Not only is it impossible to truly archive time like we so desire, but the monument to ourselves is a falsified identity designed to gain acceptance and attention. People invest time and labor in order to sell an image of themselves to others, to create an avatar that exists beyond the crippling reach of time. This fetishistic substitute exists beyond the material world of life and death. Facebook is a curious mirror of our idealized self. The danger of this narcissistic reflection is our willing entrapment in concerns of the past. Susan Stewart writes that the function of the souvenir is to actually envelop the present within the past. These competing temporalities divide our attention. The present moment is conflated with a multitude of temporalities and artifacts. Robert Dode equates the digital collections of friends and photos on Facebook and YouTube to a vaudevillian plate-spinning act in which the anxious user's attention is fragmented by the upkeep of their digital museums. The collection does not alleviate pressures on time or the human conflict with aging and death. Instead, it offers the illusion of permanence in an ever-changing world. Hey, that's pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. Let's watch it again. How do you get this, uh... Okay... You know what? I'm pressing the button. Oh! It's that. Uh... Um, yeah, na, 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 na. Yeah, I'm marching, Dan. I get it. I, this is... Oh, look. Little tiny girls. Like that. Skip to the end, please. Off you go. Ah, oh, come on, guys. Look what you did to my. Ah, oh, man. All right, let's, let's look at the phone. 